Let's look at familiar verse, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that a man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Have you, have you ever seen that verse? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Eh? Almost every young person or young <coughs> child must this memorize this verse, the word of God, the scripture, the Bible. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. What does it say? It says, all God's word, all scripture, is given by the inspiration of God. Amen. From Genesis to Revelation, it's all by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Why do I want to raise these two verses? You know, sometimes every day you get a good morning picture from your friend. Sometimes you get a good morning message from your friend. Right? Some friends are very nice. Every day they supply you with good morning messages. You mean you all don't have? Uh, all right? uh, <laughs> you all pretend as if you all don't have such friends. <laughs> Almost everyone has a friend who is very kind to send good morning messages to you every day, every morning without fail. Nothing wrong with that. I don't know whether you look at it or you delete it. Or <laughs> some of uh, I can see some just shake your head. You look at it, you just delete it. Don't bother about it. I just want to say something because sometimes with every day, uh, if you always receive all just the good and the nice words, uh, sometimes it can create an imbalance. It's just all the positive words. It gives an impression that the word of God is only full of positive messages. Nothing that will say anything that is a bit harsh. But here I read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Yes, it is profitable for doctrine. Doctrine means teach. What other versions say? For teaching, is it? For teaching. For reproof. What does your version say? For reproof. Discipline. Huh? Rebuking. Wow. How do you like it? Every morning you get a rebuking word. Good morning. And for correction. You don't like that, right? Early in the morning, people greet you with a word to correct you. But this is the danger. Sometimes I see until I feel very nos how do I say it? Nos nauseous. Until I feel very wonder vomit because you only choose all the nice verses and sometimes it's not even the bible they give you a good morning and they give you some human philosophical thought and everybody begin to type amen 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 i'm like i don't know what i don't know what are we doing sometimes i i recently was it today or yesterday i do not know there was a message just give an example huh? not to judge or anything says uh, if you do something without uh, expectation then you won't feel disappointment something like that like, you know if you do something without expecting something bad then you don't feel disappointed it's not in the bible you know everybody begins amen amen <laughs> of course like it's human philosophy you do something without expecting any return so this is protecting yourself this is protecting yourself so that you won't get hurt bible never says that there's no, it's not scriptural, you know. You've got to wake up, you know. My, my friend, my brother, my sisters. For the past two weeks, I know last week we didn't, I didn't record what we shared in Brother Albert and Sister Cherry's house. But the two weeks before that, we have been looking at some serious and we have been pondering some serious word. We've got to be very awakened. Amen. We've got to know what does the word of God say. Amen. The word of God is also for rebuke, reproof, for correction. Well, you cannot tear away, you cannot take a black ink marker and just delete it away and just say it is only all good. If it is all only good, we will not grow properly. If the word of God is food for us, if you, a few days ago, my wife posted to our family group chat, and boy, Every day since birth until how old? 18 years old. Only feed on potato chips and fries. They ended up blind. It's a true story. And when he was like, what? 17 years old? 18 years old? Legally blind. Because he only fed on potato chips and fries. Is it? Potato chips and fries. Every day. Every day. And 
you know, every day we feed on all just the nice sounding, just nice, the blessed sing word. It's not balanced, you know. As much as they are from the word of God, we have to see 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, All scripture, you must have the whole counsel of God. It's all inspired of God. It's profitable for doctrine. It didn't say period. It says comma for reproof, comma for correction, comma, amen, for instruction. Amen. It does us good, the word of God. Like I remember I was speaking to, I was talking to Joseph, he said, the father says something harsh to a child because he loves the child. If it causes the child to feel uneasy, but if it comes from the intention, the heart of the father, will you withhold a good word for someone you love just because you don't want to hurt her, his or her feeling, whether it's your child, your best friend, you withhold that word and you destroy the person forever. One day we will be judged by what we do or what we say and what we say. Amen. In the Bible, there is a sin of commission and a sin of omission. Omission means I know what right I should do and yet I don't do it, it is sin. This is biblical. There is a clear verse to say if you know what the right thing to do and yet you don't do it, it is a sin. Amen. I I, you all are not surprised, right? These are all biblical truth. Amen. So if <laughs> so I'm not I'm not purposely going on this direction, but it is just this season, this time and season that each one of us gotta clean up our acts. What do I mean by that? It's time to be cleansed, to get ready to prepare for what God wants to do. How do we get ready? You see time and again in the Old Testament. What were the instructions given by God to the people? Get ready. In three days time, God will come. Every time the instruction is, you must get ready before God does something. And what is the get ready? You got to sanctify yourself. You got to wash your clothes. You got to abstain from this. Some people say, oh, yeah, this is Old Testament. The word of God never changes. Never changes. It becomes even more difficult in the New Testament. Old Testament speaks about your external things. New Testament speaks about inside. If your righteousness does not exceed those of Pharisee, you have no part in the kingdom of God. We think that the Old Testament, uh, yeah, all this not yeah, cannot pakai anymore, no more. Uh, that is just talking about your outward actions. New Testament inside me. Your inward righteousness does not act, does not, it's not better than the Pharisees. You have no part in the kingdom of God. So it's the same. We need to clean up our act. We need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, what He is doing in this time and season. Let's prepare ourselves. Amen. How do we prepare ourselves? Continue to welcome God through His Holy Spirit to speak to us. What was the second Timothy 3.16? To speak to us, what? To correct us. Amen. To reprove us, to discipline us. So we know it's from God, not from man. When you are ready, say, God, yes, your word is inspired by you. Your word is good to rebuke me, to correct me, to instruct me. I don't think I can get an amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to be serious with our walk. It's time that we acknowledge the truth of the word of God. So the, in the past three weeks, we have looked at the end of it when the people come before God and they say, Lord, haven't we done this? Haven't we said this? Haven't we performed miracles, prophesied and do all this in your name? We look at those things at the end. So important. That at the end, if you got it wrong, no more chance. That's it. One time only you go at the end, you found out, you thought that I can make it. At that time, God said, depart from me, you doers of evil. I never knew you. It's too late. But tonight, I want to see something beginning. To end right, we also mess at the right beginning. Amen? Alright? Let's just look at the beginning. These people must have started somewhere. And when they ended, 
they got it wrong. All of us must have started somewhere. You and I have different beginnings. What, what is the beginning of that in the Bible? What are the beginnings that is told to us in the Bible? Especially when Jesus was on the earth, the gospel. How do we know the beginning? When Jesus said, Come, follow me. Right? It started with the invitation from God. It has always been the initiative of heaven. We can never claim credit to say, Oh, it is I. One day I wake up, I want to go to church. Even if one day you wake up, you want to go to church, it must have been planted by the Holy Spirit, the desire, without the Holy Spirit, you don't even, you and I don't even have the capacity to desire for God. Amen? Our capacity, our desire must even be redeemed by Jesus on the cross. Because when man fell, everything, our desire, every part of our being, our motivation, our desire, Spirit, soul, and body were tainted with sin, unrighteousness, wickedness, and transgression. There's no one part inside us that is worthy of God. Not even a single thought. You, gotta, you and I got to get this very clear. When man fell, when Adam and Eve fell, no single thought in our being. Our own righteousness is like filthy rags. Right? Filthy right. That's the truth. In the original text is not the filthy right, it's the, the women's sanitary rack. Huh? Huh? So it's a, yeah, these, these, these things. That's our righteousness. So when we realize that, like I told you before, when Jesus on the cross, he said, I first. What was he doing? He was redeeming your thirst and your hungering capacity. He did it on the cross so that you can now thirst and hunger for God again. One that is accepted by God. Amen. Amen. Let's look at Matthew chapter 4. In Matthew chapter 4, we have this early account of Jesus calling his first disciples. You can see this account in other Gospels, but we are going to look at just these few verses tonight. If you have your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 4, verses 18. We are going to read from verse 18 onwards. Have you found it? If you have found it, say, Amen. 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 Great. Let's start. Whatever version you have, let's start with the first three verses, 18, 19, 20. One, two, go. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Verse 19, Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Verse 20, They immediately left their nets and followed him. What do you have? What, what, what picture do you get here? You see Jesus walking one day, lah, eh? who knows? You may be working as whatever. Jesus one day comes say, follow me. Was it a call to ministry? No. He didn't say it, right? It wasn't a call to ministry, but it was the first call. Follow me. How many of you, how many of you use follow me shampoo? <laughs> <laughs> One who started follow me shampoo was not a Christian. But because he started follow me, I'm not saying because of that. And now he's a Christian, praise the Lord. He's a, he's a very committed Christian in Christian. The HQ of follow me is in Penang. Top Tom Ku, right? So it's a, the boss, the founder of it, he was a shampoo salesman. Not a Christian, not successful. He, he was telling his testimony, he even slept in a car just to sell shampoo. Today he has factory, today he has everything, and he is serving as an elder in a church. Follow me. He said, I didn't even know why I named my shampoo follow me. <laughs> Not many people know follow me, right? I mean this phrase is from the Bible, right? Okay, so what is it here? Jesus said, follow me. Have you heard before? Jesus telling you, follow me. 
Jesus, you may have heard Jesus say many things, but have you heard Jesus say, follow me before? No. But it came in different forms. Uh. Most of us, it came in different forms, right? What form it came? A, the pastor in front said, who wants to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You go to the fly. Right? Uh, uh, so maybe that kind of a altar call that is a different form is follow me, follow me, right? Some evangelists do not project a correct message. Come to Jesus. All your problems will be solved. Come to Jesus. You will be super duper blessed, super prosperous. So in a big crusade, you have many people come forward. And after the evangelist has gone home, Pastor must take care of all these people and say, yeah, disciple them. And they say, how come it didn't happen? <laughs> Did Jesus promise that? Come to him, no more problem? No. No one? Eh? Sure. Eh? Oh, you got it in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you got it right, right? Any of you being deep, being tricked into some Christianity here because of it? Nothing wrong, but at least now you know it's not like that. If you are still struggling, why Christian like that? Jesus has never promised that. But He promised He will be with us. Amen? Yeah. Through the storm, through the whatever problems He will be with us. But what is the picture here? What does it mean? F follow me. I don't know. I don't really know. I think you see their reaction. What was their reaction in verse 20? What did they do? They immediately, did they think about it? Did they ponder about it? Did they say, wait, 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 wait. Let me go back and ask my wife first. Let me call my wife, huh? That last time no mobile phone. Let me WhatsApp my father first. Let me get permission from my boss first. Yeah, can. Huh? Can or cannot, right? <laughs> hey, wife, uh? hey, husband, uh? no kong, uh? no boy. Uh? <laughs> no, somebody asked me follow. Uh? How how? Can uh? No, they didn't do that. Verse 20 tells us they who was the version? Same, uh? every version same. Uh? Immediate, huh? At once. At once. <laughs> Sekaligus <laughs> At once Left their nets and followed him Will you do that? Let's be honest, will you do that? Sister Sherry smile <laughs> With a big smile <laughs> Is that a yes or a no? <laughs> will you do that? Yes sir <laughs> You are yes? No? Leave everything And brother Albert will sit on the floor and cry <laughs> <laughs> You left me you Christ, go, huh? Christ is enough for me, Oh, Christ is enough. <laughs> oh. They left the nets. If you read on, let's continue to read on to verse 21 and 22. One, two, go. Mending their nets, he called them, and immediately they left the boat. This now, this what's the what's Peter's name? What's Peter's brother's name? Huh? Peter's brother's name? All oh, everybody knows Peter, right? Peter is a famous disciple. What is the brother's name? At least today you learn some facts, ah, huh? Bible trivia. Andrew. Ah, see, only now you know the brother is Andrew. Peter has a brother named Andrew. It's not. One name Peter, one name Paul. Fly away, Peter. Peter's brother is Andrew, Andrew. Huh? not Paul. Okay? Who is who are the, the other two brothers? What is John's brother's name? James. James, James. Uh, John and James. So now you see, you know four disciples. Out of the twelve disciples, you know four names. Two of them are uh, two pairs of brothers, right? Peter and Andrew, James and John. Okay. Peter and Andrew left the next followed Jesus. James and John, what did they do? Left their boats. So left their father. Left their boat and their father. Oh. <laughs> 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 left boat, left father. Left boat, left father. <sighs> How? <laughs> There's a picture. Obedient. If you get this right, we will get it right until the end. Do you see? It's a fact, it's nothing to hide from us. They left their father, they left their boat. 
That's why just now, what was it? Huh? Was it Brother Joseph? No, just now he said, Christ. What, what do you say? How great is our God? Or was it Christ is in love for me, right? Oh, just now Brother Joseph said, We will not turn back, right? <laughs> no turning back, right? We will not turn back. I, I just heard a sermon a few days ago. He says, What will you do if you are here and someone persecute your child in front of your eyes? With a knife in front of your child or your beloved, whoever beloved. You believe Jesus? I kill your child. You believe Jesus? I kill your child. You read the text. <laughs> no turning back. No turning, turning back. back. No, no, no. Let's be serious. If that is the case, I think many fathers, many mothers will say, I don't want my brother Jesus. I give back Jesus. <laughs> give back my child. I give back Jesus. Am I right? Yes. Ask yourself. Am I right? Yes. Oh, you're very honest. So how? You say there's no no turning back. You pray no turning back. Yeah, this is the truth. It will happen one day. It will happen one day. That's why my wife has already told our children when this happened, you got to know when the knife slit your throat or whatever, you got to take it. You will go straight to heaven. You got to train your children. You got to tell your children. You got to tell your loved ones. When that happened, it's not I don't love you. You and I let's be strong. No problem. You don't tell them now, you don't prepare them now, you don't prepare yourselves now. Yeah, not, you and I will not be ready. We can only sing, we can only say, Lord, we will not turn back. I give this example. Every one of you will say no, right? <coughs> serious, serious. You gotta be serious. That's why the word of God must check our hearts. We can say all we want, declare all we want, pray all we want. When the, what, what they say, rubber meets the road, is it? Or whatever. When it really comes to the real thing. Your son here. You need to believe Jesus? Huh? You, Jesus can heal you, what? can help you, one, right? That's what the soldiers say, right? Tell Jesus at all. Hey, your angels can send you down, one, right? Why you didn't come down on your cross? They will say the same thing to you. Your Jesus will save you, man. Do it now, right? Your son, your daughter. Why cannot save one? Okay. We've got to prepare ourselves, we've got to prepare our children, we've got to prepare our loved ones. Everyone say Amen. 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 You see, they were ready. So their beginning was a very clear thing. They left their father, left their boats. It's very clear from the beginning. So what does come follow me mean? First of all, all of us must count the cost. Jesus advised us, before you do anything, you better count the cost. Before you become Christian, not too late. <laughs> it's, not, it's not too late. Before you actually become a disciple and follow of Jesus, count the cost. Jesus said, you better sit down and count. Don't later you regret and say, yeah, this one, uh, I, I count <laughs> no one. The one like, better the one. Jesus said, count the cost now. Believing Jesus does not mean you will always be happy, you will always be rich, you will always be treated well. If you are always believing, being believing that these are lies. That's why I tell you why. Paul said, I was naked, I was thrown out. Hey, who's Paul? Can we compare with Paul or not? I was beaten up. I was Jesus, I, Jesus would say, I, I was fed on. We get all the all the concept wrong. Because every day you get the good morning messages, what? Good morning, God bless you today. Your whole day filled with light and happiness. <laughs> Type Amen if you agree. <laughs> amen. So every day is a sunny day. That means Paul must be very sinful. Paul must be a liar. Paul must be a liar. Almost all the 12 disciples, 11 disciples died as martyr. Almost all. Hello. How did they start? Come follow me. How did they end? The end continue following Jesus. Almost all of them died as martyr. Some died upside down cross. Some died head chopped off. Almost all eleven died as martyr. Martyr means die because they believe in Jesus. 
because they were followers of Jesus. How did it all start? Matthew 4, 18 to 20. Come, follow me. They left everything. They counted the cost. They knew it would mean something. You and I don't know. Why you and I don't know? Because the call came differently. Because we do not count the cost. You know, in the olden days, uh, in the earlier days, they don't... Coming to Jesus, uh, it's not about saying sinner's prayer. It's not saying accepting Jesus into your heart. They actually come, they repent until they really meet God, then they really know, I have salvation. Then from then on, they will never question, they will never doubt, uh, uh, will I be saved? Uh? Will I go to heaven? Uh? But modern Christian question is, will I go to heaven? Uh? Will I be saved? Uh? Who is God? Uh? After they go to just 10 years, 20 years, hey, be honest, it is the truth. A lot of Christians still struggle with salvation. Can I go to heaven? Can I go to hell? Because there was never a true conversion. Conversion in the Bible or called regeneration in a theological term has never been. Do you ever see that Paul asked people to accept Jesus as a prayer? He said, repent. Correct? No, it was always a Jesus came, repent. The kingdom of God is near. The first message by Jesus, repent. Same like Peter. Peter rose up during Pentecost. He spoke until his words huh, cut their heart. That is gospel evangelistic meeting. Not to say nice words for people to come. He spoke until it cut their heart until, until they asked Peter. So what should we do? We already say until our hearts are already so cut. What should we do? Peter didn't need to give an altar call. The people asked, what should we do? Do you see the difference? That's Bible. That's Bible. Amen. He didn't say nice words. He said, you guys are the hands. Your hands, look at your hands. It is your hands that have nailed Jesus to the cross. He didn't say nice words. He said, you are the one. Your sins have nailed Jesus on the cross. And it brought conviction. It brought conviction. Their hearts were cut. Amen. Whoa. So very different. Why, why even today even more different? When Jesus said, come, follow me, even the new generation has a more difficult, has more difficulty to understand. You know why? Social media. How many followers do you have? How many followers do you have? Your Facebook, how many followers? Huh? My daughters, they have, they join Pixel. How many followers do you have? How many likes do you have? I can like it, I can unlike it. <laughs> Uh, so Christianity is also becoming a game, right? How many followers? Oh, that singer, that artist, uh, that two million followers. Wow. Correct, no? Do you know? Do you all use? Do you all have Facebook and all that? How many followers do you have? You don't know. How many followers do you have? Less than 10. Less than 10, ah. Not famous, lah. <laughs> Join <laughs> We don't want to follow you, ah. They're 10 also, the family one. Oh, my God, yeah. Do you see, ah? The, if I'm talking about the next generation, the new generation, they value this very much. So I have 1,200 followers. So they think, when Jesus said, come follow me, they might be thinking, they are asking the people to click follow Jesus. <laughs> like Jesus. Only. What's the difference? The new generation would think that when Jesus said, come follow me, he's saying what? Be my fan. Fan. Fancy. You know fans? <laughs> Fancy. You know fan, right? Not, not, not this one, fan. Uh, <laughs> Do you have an oh, maybe an older generation who they are, they are fan of what? Cliff Richard. Am I right? No. Elvis, Beatles. Huh? You know what do fans do? They follow la. Everywhere. Wow, today Cliff Richard is here. Wow, today Cliff Richard is there. Wow, today Cliff Richard is in Malaysia. Let's go to Genting. Go everywhere. You don't like Cliff Richard? Who do you like? <laughs> Nobody likes Cliff Richard. Elvis or whoever? Everybody fan. Huh? Last time when I was younger, I have a poster. Just because everybody likes a <laughs> music group, I also have a poster of a band. Just because. See now, Dosa is very worried. He's checking how many followers he has. <laughs> <laughs> how many? 20 on here. Are you 20 on here? <laughs> In a social media world, it's so easy to follow, unfollow, 
like and like. Do you know if you do not know the function, you can follow and I follow. I don't like you, I shut you out. <laughs> Have you heard that before? Yeah. Yeah, it always happen, right? Now I stop. I don't want to be your friend anymore. I don't follow your church. I don't follow you, my pastor. I leave the church already. I quickly I follow a lot, 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 lot. Don't come near the Facebook. Huh? No, I don't go near the Facebook anymore. Um, it makes keep. It makes the modern generation fail to appreciate relationship and covenant. And it is really shown, it is manifested in the modern world. People of old who don't have social media, they treasure relationships very much. They don't simply divorce. Husband and wife don't simply divorce. Just for small matter, they don't divorce. Right? Nowadays, people don't appreciate, don't appreciate what is trust, what is relationship, what is Covenant. I don't know lah. Sorry, in Hokkien, I don't know how to say it. I know in Chinese Hokkien, they always say, we have Giki, right? Giki. Olden days, people they have Giki. Cantonese, what do you say? Giki. Yihei. 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 You know Yihei? You have a Giki. You will stand for some of your friends because you treasure the... Does it work in Cantonese? Yihei. Is that such a thing? No. In Hokkien, we used to say geeky because oh, I'm your friend, I will fight for you no matter what. Eh? No matter what, I will stand for you. I will fight for you because you are my friend. Because you are my friend. People do anything, don't worry. I'm here, I stand with you. Hey, you got such a friend now. The people laugh at you, they also follow laugh. Huh? <laughs> people step on you, they also follow step on you. Agree? Where, where are all these values? What you hear? Where are all these yeah. Nihei values? Yeah. No more already. Yeah. Correct or not? Yeah. Is there such a value? No more. Right? It depends on money, money, money. Oh, you got money, you got Nihei. No money, the Nihei is too quiet. So everything has become... <laughs> no money, no talk. My brother, my sister, everything has become a very superficial... Has become a very... Has been on a very superficial basis. Say only lah, this is my friend. Say only, this is my pastor. Last time people, if I say, I call you a pastor means there is a relationship. I take care of you, you are my sheep, you are my shepherd. Correct or not? That was the original intent. But today is I call you pastor, but you, I'm scared of you later, you come and take my wallet away. <laughs> <laughs> and then, any of these sorts can happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> I call him the pastor, but I must be very careful no, with no, my wallet. Can happen, really. <laughs> I must, I must be very watchful about my wallet. But in the past, there's no such thing. Now it becomes worse if you are aware of the recent Western development. It's not a happy thing; it's a sad thing. I call you a pastor. I must take care of my daughters. Hmm? Pastors are even pastors are even can be predators. They attack young women become so twisted in our modern world. Do you see that? I call you Pastor Ban. You I must I must hide my daughters away from you. How can? What's happening? Everything is on a very superficial basis. How many likes? How many followers? Then when you view when Jesus said follow me, you also take it lightly. Everything is also superficial me. Then then when you truly read the Bible like today, you are shocked. They left the father <laughs> They left the boat. How can that happen? If you and I only have a fans mentality. Let's be honest. Lah. Fans, ah, they are always on themselves. On one, lah. You think the fans really like the artists? Ah? You think the artists want a fan for themselves? Ah? It's a promotional marketing gimmick. Fans is for themselves. Ah. You buy more things, everything is to buy, buy the ticket. Fans is a very huh? self-absorbed mentality. I take a selfie with the artist and all that. It's very focused on a me culture, me. When you are a fan, it's always focused on me. If you only follow Jesus as a fan, hey, I, I, I like his teaching. Jesus' teaching very good. Yeah, I like Jesus teaching all. Fans are me. I, I, I like Jesus. 
of a certain level. I like, I like Jesus very good. He's a good man. He's a good teacher. If it is on a fan basis, you are very only absorbed on yourself. I've said it many times and I'll say it again. Look here. Christianity cannot be absorbed on self. What is in it for me? Christianity today has become what is in it for me. Now I come to church. What can you offer me? What position can you offer me? Huh? Where do I sit? Oh, what, what, can I, what can I get when I come to church? We have spoken about this many times. Church is not a consumer center. Remember? I told I we talk about that. Me, me, me. What's in it for me? I follow Jesus. What do I get? They never do that. The first thing is they begin to lose things. They never say, what do I get, Jesus? You follow me. What do I get? What's my <laughs> What's my ROI, return of investment? I follow you. What do I get? 34, 64, 100 fold? So you give offering also to get something. Everything is for me. Hey, don't laugh, you know. It is an H-O problem. In the Bible, let me tell you. When it is everything focused on self, uh, Christianity becomes a fit me ego in a very subtle way. Everything is true. That's why all the nice messages, that's why sometimes Christian sermons are becoming positive, positive thinking, motivational speeches. But you use Christian terms. I'm not laughing. You go to YouTube today, you go and listen to the top preachers in the US. It is exactly like motivational speech, positive thinking. You can do it. You have the potential. But you change the term into Christian. It cannot work like that. Can I give you a very extreme example? When a man focused on himself, when he followed Jesus, a very extreme example. Are you ready? Judas ended up betraying Jesus. He was in it for something. At the end, when they offer him money, he will take it more than Jesus. What, what do I get from this? People say, hey, can, I, can you tell me which is your, which is Jesus? Okay, what do I get? The peace over. Okay, deal. I tell you tomorrow. The person I kiss is the Savior. If you are in Christianity, if you are following Jesus for yourself, we can end up one day betraying Jesus. Why did Jesus, Judas betray Jesus? He was in it for something. He was in it for something all along until it manifested. I want money. There are many levels, you know. I'm just giving you the extreme. You want know, to hear a very normal, normal level? A mother came to Jesus, bowed down before Jesus. He was in it for something also, not for himself, for his son. Jesus, I want my son to sit on your left, to sit on your right. Some people are in it for their children. Are in it for themselves, either for themselves or their children or grandchildren. The Bible recorded it. I'm not. I'm not joking. It's in Matthew chapter twenty. Matthew chapter twenty, verses twenty to twenty-one. The same book of Matthew. Matthew chapter twenty, verses twenty to twenty-one. The mother of Zebedee's sons. Just now I said Zebedee. Who was Zebedee? James and John, right? They have already followed Jesus. They gave a. You see the complete family. Every story now. No? They gave up. James and John gave up the boat, gave up the father. You thought, where's the mother? Here comes the mother. The mother got it wrong. The mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons, kneeling down, asking something from him. Jesus is very kind. Verse 21, he said to her, What do you wish? She said to him, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit one on your right hand and the other on the left in your kingdom. Now we read it's very funny. But it speaks about our heart. Very true. Eh? You come to Jesus for your son, for your daughter, for your children. Do you see that? If you are only coming to Jesus for this, you'll get it wrong. Do you see the different level? 
The mother got it wrong. They left the boat, they left the father, actually the mother is at home. When the mother found out, the mother went to ask from Jesus. Are you following me? My brother, my sister, when Jesus said, come, follow me, if you and I do not understand what it actually means, we will miss the heart of the calling that Jesus issues to everyone. When Jesus said, come follow me, if we don't understand what he means, we will be like the mother. If we don't understand what he means, we will be like Judas. We are in it for ourselves only. We can make it very holy. No, uh, I want to serve God. Uh, I want my God, my children to glorify God. Uh. But you cannot hide the motivation from God. Uh. We can subtly say, no, uh, it's, yes, God cares for our children. God cares for us. He loves us. He loves to bless us. Don't get me wrong. These are all valid things. But if you get your motivation wrong, you follow Jesus just to get something out of it. Get it all wrong. Get it all wrong. You cannot follow Jesus to, just to get it out of something. That's why you come to a place and what can I get? What is in it for me? Let's not, let's remember. Each time you think, what can I get out of this? Think Judas. Judas finally betrayed God. He regretted and he committed suicide. So you have all these examples, right? Peter and Andrew gave up the nets and followed Jesus. You have James and John gave up the boat and gave up the father, correct? Am I right? Yes. And then you see there are many people also. Let's, what, let's look down Matthew chapter 4, verse 25. What does Matthew chapter 4, verse 25 say? Do you have Matthew chapter 4, verse 25? Yes. Let's read together. One, two, go. Great multitudes followed him from Decapolis, from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. So it's not just the disciples. Hello, look here. Many people in the Bible it was recorded as great multitudes. You know what happened to these great multitudes? Huh? In John chapter 6, huh? when Jesus says something that don't, they don't like, huh? they leave Jesus. These great multitudes, you have so many people following Jesus and you are. They must say, yeah, Jesus. Jesus, very, Jesus knew their intention. Huh? He never put their heart, huh? he never trusted them. When Jesus says something different, hey, not ngam, not ngam, no ngam, no ngam with me, they left. So if you do not appreciate the call of Jesus, maybe you are still a Christian in your heart. You have already left Jesus. Do you see that? You have not moved on with Jesus anymore. You still go to church, you still call yourself Christian, you don't worship idol, you say. But you are like the great multitudes. They have left. Something not done, something happened in your life, you cannot accept this is from God, you are angry at God, or something happens that you complain and you don't like God, you stop following God. It stops. Your relationship with God stops. Or, all that you do is just to feed yourself from there onward. Maybe in, from, at the start, you are full of fire, zeal, and passion. I follow Jesus. And I will give everything I will give. Time, energy, money. Like the disciples, they left everything. I'll do that. Something happened, you begin to stop. You begin to be calculated with God. You begin, you say, I'm wise. Right? No, it's not your wise. You have stopped following Jesus. Men may disappoint you. But sometimes we blame it on God. We don't react in front of men, but we react in front of God. We stop the passion, the zeal, the love we have for God. We stop following God. Like the great multitude, they only followed Jesus up to a certain stage and they stop. Hello? This is real. This is real. Why? 
even the disciples stop. Even the disciples stop. When Jesus died on the cross, the disciples went back fishing. What did they do? Threw away the nets. Threw away the boats. Am I right? They threw away the nets. They threw away the boats. And they went back fishing. You know, in the eyes, in the mind of a Jewish person, it is a very serious thing. You, know? you have given up everything to follow a rabbi. Now you go back fishing. It's a very serious thing. They all went back. They couldn't see the, what was shown there. They did not understand Jesus. They did not understand the call of Jesus. They knew they left everything. But halfway, they got their understanding comes in. Their own self understanding comes in. Oh, Jesus will be king. Jesus will be king of Israel. He will set up a kingdom. I will be prime minister. You will be cabinet minister. You will be blessed. You will sit on the left. You will be prosperous. Surely in front of us, everything will be very beautiful. Suddenly, Jesus gets caught. Suddenly, everything turns sour. Nothing seems to work. Jesus get caught. And now their leader is dead. They went back fishing. He saw they just dropped their nets. Now they went back fishing. So it was a very serious offense. Serious misgiving. For the disciples to do that in the heart and in the eyes of the Jewish people. That is why my brother and my sister look here. When Jesus said, come follow me. Or whatever we hear, the word of God or the call of God. Listen to me carefully. Most of the time, we only understand through the idols in our hearts. We understand, we interpret the call of God through the idols in your heart. If there are idols in your heart, you will understand based on the idols in your heart. Many times, you and I cannot understand the ways of God if there are idols in our heart. You will interpret things according to the idols in your heart. Listen carefully. You may not fully understand this yet, but go back and think about it. Most of the times, we do not understand God's ways. We do not know God because we interpret what God calls us to do, interpret His ways through the idols in my heart. I have an idol. I'm looking for something. I want a position, I want this, I want a blessing, I want this. So you interpret everything according to that idol. Do you see the danger there? That's what the disciples did. I just told you. They want Jesus to set up a kingdom in Israel. They expected that there was their idol inside. There was a wrong understanding they had. When everything was shattered, this also shattered, they missed the heart of God's message, they missed the heart of the call of God. They went back fishing. Go back and think. Don't just today listen and forget about it. Go back and think. What are the idols in my heart? What I have heard from God that I interpret through the idols in my heart. So sometimes I think that God promised, then you will say, why never happen? Because it doesn't happen according to the way you expected it. You expect it to happen. Because you expect it to happen according to the idols in your heart. Hello? Are you catching it? You expect it to happen according to the way you want it to happen. And God has to keep delaying until you and I get rid of that idol. When we get rid of the idol, when we say, Okay God, do as you please. Then God can step in and do Amen. 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 Do you see the beauty of God's way? He has always been patiently waiting for you and me. When we say, I'm still waiting, why God never do this? Why God never do that? You want God to do according to the way you want it. There's a, an idol in you, a greed in you. It, it can be greed, it can be lust, it can be anything inside us. And those are idols inside us. And we are interpreting every message, every call, every way of God through that, through that idol. And it is very, very dangerous. 
Wow, it's so fast already. It's 10 o'clock. So now I'm going to go back very quickly. What is this call? What is this call when Jesus said, Come, follow me. Come, follow me. Let us not miss the heart of this call. Let us not miss the heart of this message. Let us not interpret it through the idols in our heart. Everybody say amen. 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 So what is it about? You look at the Old Testament, you will understand this Hebrew culture, this Jewish culture. When Elijah came to call Elisha, Elisha burned the bridges. No more, I'm not going back anymore. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. If you have found it, say Amen. We are going to read verses 19 to 21. First Kings chapter 19. Have you found it? Amen. Let's go. Verses 19 to 21. Okay, we read together. One, two, go. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the twelve. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. He said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? Verse 21. So Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen, slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment, gave it to the people they ate, then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. You see, the Hebrew culture is if a rabbi, if a, some, if a prophet, if a rabbi comes and pick you, and pick you, and he says, come follow me, that means in the Hebrew culture, you have to understand that, that means you qualify. Because rabbis only look for the best. Rabbis, you know rabbi, R-A-B-B-I, they are teachers, they are leaders. Rabbis only look for the best because the best, on, he will only train the best who will then take over their place, who will become like them. Rabbi will go and, so most of these people, Matthew, the tax collector, James and John, right? Peter and Andrew, James and John, all these people, they, are not, they don't qualify to be disciple of any great rabbi. Why? If they are they qualified, they would have followed a rabbi already. But they ended up as fishermen, they ended up as tax collectors. These are not very nice people in the society, not very high class. Fishermen, tax collector. So when Jesus came and said, come follow me, suddenly they said, wow, the rabbi said, I qualify. So when Jesus came, he did not follow the Hebrew culture of selecting the best. He wants to prove a powerful kingdom principle. First Corinthians, we are told, Paul told us the powerful kingdom principle. He chose the weak and the foolish. Whilst the rabbi chose the best, Jesus came to choose the weak, the foolish. Of course, he also chose doctors. He also chose different uh, occupations. He chose them. They knew it was a call to follow this rabbi. You know what is a rabbi's calling? When you follow a rabbi, you got to burn the bridges. What Elisha did, Elisha said, wait, wait, let me say goodbye to my parents. I will never see them again. I will follow Elijah. Every step he takes, I will follow. If some even say, when the rabbi go and bathe, they also follow. They must learn how to bathe like a rabbi. They do everything, every step they must, they cannot close their eyes, they must do everything. That is a calling, rabbi calls, and is entering into the call to be like a rabbi. So when Jesus called them, they understood, they gave up, they started going. That's why the Hebrew Jewish context is clear to them. They know when Jesus said, come follow me, it is a call to become like Jesus. It is a call to come be with me, see how I live this life, and now you become like me. Amen. Amen. 
Let's, let, let us come follow me. That's why Elisha burned the bridges. And for a person, eh, the Jewish culture, for a person to be following a rabbi, you know what he must he do? Once he give up everything, he must press the delete button. He start everything new. It's going to be a school of unlearning. Whatever I know of the past, whatever of my past, what my own emotion, what I like, what I don't like, everything I delete, all clean. Now I start to follow what this rabbi will show me. His ways, his teaching, I begin to receive. I have no say. What I what I like, what I think, everything must be discarded. My own style of thinking, everything must press a delete button. That's why Jesus say in Luke chapter 6 verse 40, a disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. You see that? A student will be like the teacher. The one who follows the rabbi will end up become like Jesus. One who follows Jesus will end up becoming like Jesus. And if we want to accept this call when Jesus said, follow me, we got to choose to delete everything we know of the past. We got to choose to delete how our ego thinks, how our ego feels. Oh, sometimes I do this, I'm angry. Hey, 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 hey. you cannot be angry anymore. You are not following a rabbi. Now, last time, I, if, I, if this person do like that, if I have to do this again, I, I'll be very angry. Hey, hey, no, 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 no. Don't forget, you have gone into this new journey. You are following this rabbi. All of the past, no more anymore. The way you want to be angry, uh, the way you want to think about other people, uh, all you delete. You are now, what is that call? What is that call about? A call to die. A call to die to self. Come follow me means a call to die to yourself. Watch every moment the Savior moves. Carry your cross. Deny yourself. Die to self and follow Jesus and become like Him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's very clear. Well, perhaps tonight you've got to go back and count the cost. If you and I are not willing to go on, you better might as well decide now and tell Jesus. If we are not willing to go on all the way, better come the cost. Jesus means, when you say come follow me, means all the way you end up be like him. When you are like him, you will do what he asks you to do. Amen. So I'm going to end with this thought. I leave this thought with you. Just now I say that the disciples also made a mistake, remember? They went back fishing. They went back fishing. Such a grave offense. How could you follow the rabbi and now you go back to your fishing? How could you do that? You can't do that. I want to encourage all of you. What did Jesus do? What did Jesus do? When they went back fishing, Jesus prepared breakfast for them. When Jesus found them, Jesus said, Have you all eaten? Have you all eaten? Not yet. Hmm? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus asked, Have you all eaten? <laughs> not yet. Jesus said, Not yet. Look here, look here. Jesus prepared food. Because in the Hebrew Jewish, Jewish culture, when I sit down and eat with you, when I sit down and eat with you I forgive you I accept you back that's why in the New Testament it says you don't sit with a, uh, someone who practice wickedness and all that because when you sit you are accepting what they do so when Jesus sat down he said I accept you back now you know what this call is about I forgive you let's have a meal together so the disciples, when they realized it's their savior, they were not. They were shocked. They were fearful. But if they, then they found themselves, hey, we are having a meal with him. 
He accepted us. He has forgiven us. Wow. So even though sometimes what you hear may be a harsh word, but there is hope in this harsh word that Jesus always comes, ever ready. If you have missed the heart of the call, if you have stopped following Jesus, tonight He comes back to you. He said, I want to have a meal with you. I will accept you back. Let's get your vision refined again. Let's clarify your vision. Let's count the cost again. This follow me is not all about yourself. This following Jesus is a call to die. A call to carry the cross. Die to yourself and to follow Jesus. We're going to take communion tonight. We're going to... I believe this is the heart of the Father. Then He wants to have a meal with us. When He has this meal with us, He is saying, I accept you. I forgive you. You may have gotten it wrong. You may have missed the message. You may have missed what it meant to follow Jesus. We may have our own ulterior motives. We may have other things in our hearts. There may be idols in our hearts. But Jesus said, have you eaten? Have you taken your, have you, have you taken your breakfast? Have you eaten? He's inviting them. Come back. There is hope. When you are restored, when you realize, you can only be restored when you realize you have not been right. When you know that you are not on the right path, only then you can be restored. If you keep on walking away, keep on walking away, and you thought you are following Jesus when Jesus is there, you keep believing and following Jesus. I'm serving Him. I'm doing all this. What? what what's the? What? You don't know how, how is it to be restored? You keep doing it. Oh, I'm doing it. I'm doing it until the last day. And you say, Lord, Lord, have I not done this? Have I not done that? And then I never ask you. Oh, this is not the way. It's too late, baby. So while we are still in the middle of the path, we come to realize, oh, the scripture today has rebuked me, has reproved me, has corrected me. God, please restore me to your correct path. Lord, please restore me to the ancient path. Let me know, let me understand your ways. Let me not be blinded by the culture of the day. Let me not be blinded by the idols in my heart. Father, I pray, awaken my heart. Awaken my heart and readjust. Reorient my direction again, O oh God. Father, tonight we thank you for your word. In 2 Timothy 3.16, we learn that your word is profitable for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Lord, we thank you. Your word is a lamp to our feet. When we have gone wrong, whether intentionally or unintentionally, when we have missed the heart of your call, we thank you tonight. You are calling us back again. You are restoring us to the zeal, to the love, to the passion once again for you and for you alone. We may have been angry in the past against men. We didn't know we channel our anger, our bitterness towards you. But tonight, Lord, we want to rend our hearts and we want to confess our sins before you. We want to hear your Call to repentance, O oh God. Repentance means to turn away and begin to right, to begin to take the right path. The turning of our minds, the turning away from our, of our wheels. Father, I pray tonight your Holy Spirit will bring a spirit of conviction upon each one of us. That God our vision be clarified, our desire be purified, Lord. Let there be only a pure stream 
of desire in our hearts that we truly only want Jesus for who he is that we love Jesus because he first loved us not to get something from Jesus not to always ask what is in it for me God you are calling out for a pure bride you want to have a spotless bride without blemish and God your Holy Spirit is actively calling out to us washing us with your word washing us with your blood cleansing us with your fire so tonight we know this invitation and we want to accept this invitation as we partake communion tonight Lord we know it is in your heart the father heart of God who wants to restore his children the father heart of God who wants to accept us like you accepted the disciples who have gone fishing like you restore their relationship tonight you want to have a meal with us you have prepared your flesh and your blood as the meal you are asking us will you partake my flesh and my blood because there was once in the history when you say that many turn away the multitudes who first followed you when you say he who does not partake of my flesh and of my blood does not have a portion in me so at that point Lord the multitudes turn away tonight we do not want to turn away tonight we see your blood and your flesh as an invitation as a sign of your great love to restore us that you love us and you want us to be back on the right path Lord this is not speaking to my neighbor this is not speaking to other people this is your voice speaking to me this is your finger pointing towards me you are speaking to me directly you are pointing your finger at me and say I am speaking to you I'm calling out to you now is the time come follow me I will accept you back let us have a meal together let us have a meal together shall we stand brother and sister as the bread and as the cup is being passed I pray and I ask that with an attitude of fearing God as an, with an attitude of prayer let us just take the cup and the bread in our hands Mm. Do not eat, do not partake it yet. We'll take it together. But as it is being passed around, hold it in your hands. Begin to commune with God. Begin to talk to God. If tonight God has spoken to you, begin to commune with Him. Begin to engage God. Begin to engage the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your broken body, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Just pass the thing, pass it around, everyone. Just take the bread, take the cup in your hand. Let's partake it with the correct attitude, with the right man, preparing our hearts, giving thanks to Him. Remember, He's asking us for a meal. He's asking us for a meal because He wants to accept us. He accepts us. Everyone who believes in Jesus as the Lord and Savior can take this. Okay, we do not stop you if whether if you have not been baptized. As long as you believe Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can partake it. But you must know what is this all about. It is the broken body of Jesus, it's the blood of Jesus. On the night Jesus was betrayed. Jesus said, this is my body that is broken for you. Take this in remembrance of me. We're going to remember Jesus together. Just hold that bread in your hand. Why not take this time? If God has spoken to you, confess your sin. Are the 
Father, forgive me, cleanse me, purify me from every idol in my heart, Lord. Every sin, every transgression, oh God. Begin to talk to him. Open your mouth. Father, cleanse me. Forgive me the idols in my life, oh God. Forgive me the greed, the lust, the anger, the, the self-ambition, Lord. The self-ego. The many things inside me, Lord. Tonight, I confess my sin, Lord. I want it for myself, I want it for my children, I want it for my family. How I have not glorified you, how I have not honored you. Forgive me, cleanse me, purify me, O God. Wash me, cleanse me with your blood. You are faithful and just. Come on, people of God, begin to talk to Him. You gotta do this yourself, no one can do it on your behalf. You gotta talk to God. Pour out your heart. <coughs> Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me. I want to take this with the correct heart and attitude. Jesus, you are the one who extend this invitation to us to partake this meal together with you. Because you love us, you want to restore each one of us. You want to restore each one of us. You want to restore the call in each one of our lives, Lord. You do not want us to go astray. So you are inviting us to this meal tonight. So speak to Him, talk to Him. Talk to Him. If, he, if His finger is pointing at something in your heart, my advice to you is just address that thing. His finger, finger will be pointing at something in your heart. That thing must go. That thing must go. That must go. Yourself must die. If he's pointing to that, you must go. The anger you harbor, the unforgiveness, whatever it is, the greed, the lust, the jealousy, that must go. Whatever that is. If the finger is pointing right there, you tell God, this idol must go. People's opinions mean so much to you. That must go. If other things are more important than the word and the truth of God's word, that must go. Father, may your finger tonight point to our hearts, point to the motivation of our hearts, point straight deep inside our spirit, our hearts. Father, let your word cut a deep wound in our hearts tonight. Holy Spirit, we welcome your word of correction, your word of rebuke in our lives, Lord. How we must really repent and come back to you. As a group of people here, Lord, as a group of your body here, we repent as a corporate body, Lord. Forgive us for our wrongdoing. Forgive us if we have not honored you, worship you with all our hearts, with all our spirit, our soul and bodies. As a corporate group of people here in Bethany, Lord, forgive us, cleanse us. I ask, O oh God, that you have mercy on all of us. Have mercy on our families, Lord. The families that are represented here. Lord, forgive us. Men's opinions are more important than, your, than you, Lord. Forgive us, O oh God. Forgive us. Our egos are more important Forgive us, O oh God. Break our hearts. Cleanse our hearts, Lord. Wash us with your precious blood. People of God, begin to confess your sins. Begin to admit He's faithful and just. Don't just stay quiet there. You've got to talk to Him. You cannot just keep quiet. You've got to talk to Him. You know, you've got to confess your sin. You don't have to confess before a priest anymore. But you can confess directly to Him tonight. The way has been opened. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just a few more minutes, I give this opportunity. A few more minutes it's between you and God is important. It's very important. I'm not going to skip this. Very important. Take these few minutes. Allow the Holy Spirit, allow the spirit of conviction to convict you. And begin to open your mouth. Begin to confess. Begin to talk to God. Father, we ask for the gift of repentance for each one of us. Rain down your gift of repentance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So once again, on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he lifted it up, and he said, this is my body which was broken for you. Take this in remembrance <coughs> of me. Father, we thank you for your bread, for this bread. This is your body, Lord. Bless this bread. Bless your body, Lord. As we partake your flesh tonight, we, we thank you. Our lives are being brought aligned to your purpose, to your nature. May we return to the original call of following you. As we partake your flesh, heal us, heal our spirit, soul, and body. When Jesus gave me this message. He said this message will bring healing to us. I do not know what healing, but this message will bring healing to us. If you accept the message tonight in your heart, the message will heal you. Because he said he sent his word and his word healed our diseases. So whatever sickness, whether spirit, soul or body, you can believe for your healing tonight. a night ago or one day or two days ago when I have this message I know it comes with the promise of healing so if you receive this message with an open heart you will also receive your healing spirit, soul and body thank you Lord we bless this body we bless this bread we thank you we partake your flesh together let's break the bread we partake of your flesh tonight Lord thank you for accepting us Thank you for restoring us. Thank you for healing us. Let's take it in Jesus' name. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. In the same way, we lifted up the cup and say, This is the blood of the new covenant. Bring this in remembrance of me. You and I are no longer bound by the past, by the old covenant. His blood has made a way for each one of us to access the kingdom realm, to walk in the kingdom realm, to live from the kingdom realm. Let us not be earth bound, but let us all begin to set our affections on things above and walk and live from there. So thank you for your blood, O oh God, that wash us, cleanse us, heal us, and open the way for each one of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood of reconciliation. We speak reconciliation to every relationship. We speak the release of reconciliation in our midst also, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Bless this blood in Jesus' name. Let's drink this together.